inequalities and poverty and unsatisfied basic needs continue to feed exclusion. And more contemporary challenges have resurfaced. We talk about the rise of racism and xenophobia in particular. These are at the heart of the long walk of peace. And this is one of the main messages of the book, The Long Walk of Peace, that we are gathered around today. Clearly, at the beginning of the UN system, peace had a very particular meaning, a very concrete meaning. And that was the absence of conflict, and particularly the absence of war. La paix n'est pas seulement l'absence de guerre. C'est très important de voir à quel point on doit avoir une approche holistique, finalement, de, de la paix, qui serait finalement une sorte de, de somme de tous les droits euh, universels, euh, qui, dans un idéal, bien sûr, sont respectés. Ça reste un idéal vers lequel on veut tendre. Human rights is a means, an instrument, a tool toward an end, or in this case, three ends. Justice, freedom, and peace. Beginning in roughly the 1960s, a different theory of peace was introduced. And I think of the Norwegian peace scholar Johan Galtung, who introduced the concept of positive peace. And what he meant by positive peace, again, as described in the book, is basically something like social, social economic, and political transformation with the idea that armed conflict is a result of unequal structural conditions. Peace is just a way and this way goes to the fruition of human happiness, human dignity, and at the end, human rights, which actually in today's, you know, uh, sort of uh, discourses on peace, sometimes take a back seat. I mean, I've heard people arguing that the quest for human rights complicated, complicate the process of peace. How absurd it could be, because if the idea is just to put an end to the armed conflict, I think we are missing the real core of the peace. Against the backdrop of developments which are very worrying, not just in relation to the International Criminal Court, but in relation to the fracturing of the European Union, the rise of nationalism, and most importantly from my perspective when we think about peace, we have again the, the confirmation that global inequality continues to explode completely out of control. as a peace researcher, how do you see the interaction between peace and human rights? Instead of simply lamenting uh, over the governments and the leaders who defy human rights at uh, the drop of their head, I think that is where we come back to this work and to the work of UNESCO. If we think about asking questions about human rights and the role that human rights might play, whether a human right to peace or not, in 2018, it's a very different kind of political and economic and social context than to have asked this question in 1997 and 1998, right? So there was a high point of optimism about the possibility of human rights. Uh, as some scholars would say, the, the central logic for global justice. Now, 20 years later, I think we have to have a much more flexible, a much more plural, a much more open understanding. To me, the interesting question is, what role should human rights institutions play? And I think that the consensus among scholars now is that human rights should ha continue to have an important role to play, but not the only role. Probably it's through education, through transformation of public mindset, that we can create a critical mass, a critical force which can challenge leaders and the authorities who defy human rights, who do not see the core importance of human rights in the kind of peace that they talk about. You are talking about the people who provide protection. Who, who will provide election? It will be the rich, the powerful. Uh, why don't, not, don't we speak about the right to protection? Then you will be speaking about the people who need protection and you can discuss how that protection will be provided. A proverb African says that in the forest, when the branches of the trees are connected, the branches are the nations, the diversity, the combat, the permanent conflict. Thank you. 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 Thank
et amener la paix entre les branches, il faut aller aux racines qui s'embrassent, c'est-à-dire les valeurs universelles. Donc, le problème, c'est le tronc, la société. Et dans le tronc, il y a les droits de l'homme. Je suis sûr que M. Dien connaît un autre proverbe africain qui dit que lorsque les éléphants se battent ou font l'amour, dans les deux cas, c'est l'herbe qui souffre sous leurs pieds. So we, we have got to remember that when the big boys, uh, you know, do all the things they do, uh, little guys, uh, I mean, uh, have have a bad time or may have a bad time. The rule of law is is absolutely indispensable inside one country. It is also uh, absolutely indispensable in the relationship between countries, and that is what uh, I mean. You. When you speak of international law, international law, there is no international law if there is an exception for one country or ten countries or three countries or four countries. Uh, so you know, this is this is the need to work for international peace is a need to continue to demand more. Je pense que nous sommes là pour rappeler que nous sommes avant tout des citoyens du monde et que nous sommes là pour défendre l'universalité. C'est vraiment le bien le plus précieux de l'humanité. Il faut le protéger jour après jour. Et dans les deux cas, cela repose aussi sur quoi Cela repose sur le fait de prôner une culture du dialogue et un dialogue des cultures. All important and lasting movements for change came from people. People working together around a vision. It didn't come from states. It didn't come from political entities. In most cases, it was people working against the state. So this is something to keep in mind when we think about how we understand the relationship between peace and human rights. So I agree very much that it's, it's about all of us working together. La paix est une construction au cœur de laquelle se trouve la question des droits de l'homme. Et ces constructions, il faut les inscrire dans le temps long. Ces constructions nécessitent des principes, des textes, des mécanismes, mais nécessitent surtout vous, ce que vous en faites. C'est-à-dire que la paix n'est pas une question d'experts ni d'intellectuels. C'est une question de valeur et d'éthique. Et c'est là que je fais appel, moi, à l'UNESCO, qui a été littéralement désarmée sur le plan des droits de l'homme, pour qu'elle se réarme et qu'elle revienne à son rôle éthique, celui qui est dans, ses, dans son mandat. There are some observers who think that um, intergovernmental uh, organizations such as UNESCO or UNDP in general is, uh, is meaningless. Their presence is meaningless because they uh, fight for uh, human rights, uh, but they, at the same time they have member states that are violating the same uh, human rights that they're defending for. The final point is, what is the role of UNESCO? UNESCO is an institution, but as I said, UNESCO is a unique, a special institution whose activities are not primarily directed toward interstate activities, but are directed toward precisely that kind of civil society work. L'acte constitutif a été rédigé par des hommes et des femmes qui sont sortis de la Deuxième Guerre mondiale, traumatisés, bouleversés par le fait qu'il y a eu l'Holocauste. C'est-à-dire qu'on a décidé d'éliminer une communauté physiquement et que le pays qu'il a fait était un parangon de la civilisation. Et donc, Les gens sont sortis de là complètement traumatisés. Que faut-il faire Et ils ont produit, en ce qui concerne l'acte de l'UNESCO, la Constitution vous conseille de le lire, un texte bouleversant de profondeur et de beauté. When we think about the role that an institution like UNESCO would play, we have to think about the challenges that we face. In many ways, the world has become more difficult for human rights uh, promotion. And so I think that we need all of the good actors that we can have uh, in to sort of balance out these forces that we've heard about. La paix est en effet euh, multifactorielle et dans notre approche effectivement c'est euh, le résultat de, du respect de l'ensemble des droits humains, c'est-à-dire il euh, ne faut jamais l'oublier, non seulement les droits civils et politiques et donc l'absence de guerre, de conflits armés notamment, mais aussi la justice sociale, donc les droits économiques, sociaux et culturels, l'accès à l'éducation, l'accès à la culture, tout cela mis ensemble peut faire naître la paix 
et je rejoins ce qui a été dit déjà pour conclure, que la, la paix est avant tout aussi en nous. Le travail de l'UNESCO est indispensable et ne doivent pas être découragés par les critiques, les abandons, les pays qui se retirent. Euh, il y a du travail, ils peuvent le faire avec ou sans ces pays. Et euh, les droits de l'homme, la paix sont au centre des activités sur le plan national, international, familial. Euh, mais les critiques aussi sont indispensables. Euh, nous ne pouvons pas être satisfaits de ce que nous avons réalisé. Il faut continuer à, à, à aspirer à mieux. Et ce mieux ne peut pas être atteint si nous faisons preuve de complaisance.